What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to add tonal interest with Copic markers. Now to those of you who don't know what tonal interest is, let's say you have a colored light shining upon something and then that colored light is being blended to that base tone that you have. Let's say this hand here is the same tone as my hand here and there's like, like a yellow light shining upon it. Adding that yellow to like the part where it's getting shined on that's that's what tonal interest is and when you're doing that with comics that's what kind of like draws the viewers eye and makes it a little bit more interesting that's why it's called tonal interest and the word tonal comes from colored light like I explained so we're gonna do that with Copic markers now what you're gonna need is your uh, your line work like this hand I have drawn here I'm gonna use that you're gonna need a separate sheet of paper and I'm gonna this is the same paper I'm using for this I'm using thick cardstock and then you're gonna need some Copic markers and I have a lot of them so let's get started first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna want to pick a pick a base tone for your uh, for your hand what color is the hand gonna be originally I'm gonna grab E23 and then it's up to you to decide which color you want to add the shine on I'm gonna pick Y06 it's a yellow since brown and yellow have different values it's gonna be a little bit tough to kind of blend those two, but that's what this separate sheet of paper is for. So it's gonna be a little bit difficult to blend the brown and the yellow. This is where the in-between color comes from. You're gonna look for a color in your collection that's gonna both blend this brown and this yellow, so that way it'd be easier to blend both of these into each other on the final drawing. And that's where the separate sheet of paper comes in. So we're gonna leave this off to the side and we're gonna test out a few colors that we can use to blend these two, like an in-between color, a mid-tone. I'm gonna do that in time-lapse and then I'm gonna come back to you guys. Okay, now that I found a mid-tone, I found Y26. So you're gonna get rid of all these other markers that you don't need, unless you're gonna use them in your final drawing, but I'm only drawing a picture of a hand, so I'm not gonna need the rest of these. So you have your your light color, you got your mid-tone, and your uh, your base tone. And then for this base tone, if you want to shade everything later on, you're going to want to need shades for this color, your, uh, your base tone. And um, I'll probably get into that later on in the video, but for now I'm just going to go with these three colors. So, I'm gonna grab the hand back. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the oh no I'm gonna apply the light tone and with this light tone you're gonna want to make a big area around it because since you had to add an additional marker to blend uh, to blend this with your uh, um, base tone you're um you're gonna need a big space for it because most of this is gonna be the blending part and then you and then the lighting tone so you're going to want to have a big area for that. Okay, and then apply your base tone. Okay, since my marker is about to dry up on me, uh, I'm going to try to gravitate to a different marker. But I got most of the base color in set, so that's what matters for now. So I'm going to go in with my uh, mid-tone, which is a uh, Y26. And I'm just going to try to blend these two colors together. And see, um, if you're blending a color that has a dark value to a light value, you're going to need a, a little bit more colors for that. But since we're, um, since the brown I chose and the yellow I chose have almost the same uh, value, and that requires one mid-tone, that makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to try to go in, go in with this yellow. But if it's not adding up, you can go in with the... Uh, you can add another color to it, but only if it's a color that's in between these two colors. Like say, here's like a brownish yellow and here's a regular yellow. So you might want to add a color that's um, almost similar to these two colors. It's basically these, these two mixed. So I'm going to try Y15 and see how that adds up. And this is why you made this uh, lighting layer big because you, you'll never know when you'll need to add a whole bunch of other colors to the mix. And then go back in with this uh, light yellow. And 
and see it's blending it's blending in a little bit more and see how it's adding a little bit total interest to the uh, to the brown and once you hear once you have the um, tonal interest down you can go in and shade whatever you have for your base color but since this marker is right up on me we're gonna try uh, E35 and um, I already have a shade for that let's go for E37 for my shade and then if I want to go darker I can so let's go ahead and do that Okay, so that's how you do tonal interest with your Copic markers. And before I end this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how I came up with uh, coming up with different swatches. So I'm gonna take this other piece of paper, and what I did was I took my base color. So let me grab my base color if it still has enough ink and not messing around with me. So this is how I did it. So I grabbed the base color. And I grab my light color, and I blended that white and I blended that light color into that uh, base tone, so I can see what color looks similar to this kind of like mixture of colors. Basically, I had to find out which marker has this color ink inside, which makes it easy to blend. If and if uh, if I had to go further into finding another marker to blend the light color in, then I will. But that's why I said earlier you'll never know if you had to add another marker ink to add some more blending to your uh, to your tonal interest. So that's why I found uh, Y26 because it's sort of like a brown shade and it's sort of like a yellow shade. So I thought I could blend those together. And um, since that doesn't really uh, help me blend the yellow, I had to go in with another color and I used Y15 to help me blend that in with the yellow blend uh, blend into Y06 because if you just go in and you just add your base color and then add the light color and you'll try to keep blending it by adding too many by adding too much marker ink you'll know you're doing it wrong and you'll know if you see a little bit of watermarks over here when you're trying to blend I know it's possible you can use colored pencils to kind of like fix that but I try not to just to uh, just because while I still got markers out I like to use colored pencils separately because that's a, that's how I work but if you want to use colored pencils to fix mistakes like this then go right ahead I just I personally don't do that but yeah that's how I use that's how I do tonal interest in my uh in my drawings and uh, if I can find my other drawing I can show you how I did it and here's a drawing I recently made where I used my uh my yellow marker and I blended just about everything in, into the yellow. But see how I did with black? I had to use six markers to blend into that yellow. Cause like I said earlier, like I said earlier, if you're blending a, a color with a dark value like black into a color with light value like yellow, then it's gonna take a lot of marker ink to try to get that blending into the yellow. Same thing with uh, almost everything here, but here's the light gray I did. It didn't really take me a whole bunch of colors to get uh, to that yellow. It only took me like two because gray, it has a light value. This light gray does. And the same thing with this white. If you're doing with white, then you're going to need a colorless blender and a light yellow. If you're using a yellow like I did in this video. Okay, so if you like this video and you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. And subscribe to my channel for more videos every week. And I'll see you in my next one. I can't let a nigga like Pat Kate.